What's up, guys? What's up, Neil? What's happening? How's the AV quality? I'm using OBS tonight. I think we're streaming in HD. Yeah, we're streaming in HD. So what's happening? I was editing a video, editing a video. Figured I'd take a little break. Come over here. See what everybody was up to. Thanks for all you guys for subscribing over here to Dynamically Challenged. Oh snap, Uncle Jam's in the house. What's up, man? How is the Trino of working out? <clears throat> Uncle Jam is a Trino of brother. I've been neglecting doing my review. It's been taking me a while. I did, I actually shot the whole Trinov room correction portion of the video, but I just got to do like the voiceover part for it. It's taking me a long time. And then I still got to do that Macintosh video. <clears throat> still waiting for the mic. Oh man, you didn't get the microphone yet? That's weird. Did you order it from, uh, did you order it from value? They're usually pretty quick. I'm actually gonna go down to Value Electronics tomorrow and pick up a projector. I'll ask him about the microphone. But I got this coming in tomorrow. Let me see if I can bring the picture up. Thanks. So tomorrow, this is what we should be picking up. At least we're going to shoot an unboxing down at the store. And then I'm supposed to be taking this home with me tomorrow. So I'm excited to check that out. It says, let me see if I can fit this better. Give me a second here. Come on. I should have did this before I logged on. All right, here we go. Just get the main picture. So if we look at the specs on this thing, let's go to specs. It's supposed to be native 4K, although I'm pretty sure it's a, uh, I'm pretty sure it's DLP. But it says right there, 4K UHD 3840. It has got 2,700 lumens of brightness, which is pretty bright. I think my JVC is about 1,800, 17 or 1,800. No, I actually, I think it's 1,900 for the NX7. And it does have zoom, and it's got lens shift. It's a um, laser, so it's 23, I'm sorry, 23, 20,000 hours on eco mode, 30,000 hours. If this looks anything like their ultra short throw projector, it should be pretty good, pretty good quality. Cause I did like that little ultra short throw. So be on the lookout for that. I think, I think I'm supposed to go there and shoot it tomorrow, but, but there's like uh, some embargo or something like that. Like after I shoot it, I have to, I gotta wait to be allowed to put it online. So I can't be like, the, well, I guess I could be the first. Once they say it's okay, I can throw it up there. But that's where we're going to go 
Down to value and check out tomorrow. Value Electronics. But yeah, man, I, I, yeah, I'm definitely going to ask him about that microphone because you should have gotten it by now. Because you didn't get, you got that, the turn off, what, like a month and a half ago or so? Quite a, quite a while ago now. <clears throat> Unless you just ordered it last week or something like that. I don't know. How much, what's the damage on one of those? I don't even know the price on this. I don't think he supplied a price or maybe they didn't, maybe they didn't say yet because they don't have a price on their website. So it might be like a to be determined type of thing. My guess is uh, maybe, maybe $4,000, probably. I mean, it looks kind of business-esque to me because it's white. Or else maybe they just, they just want to keep it white. But this looks like a business projector. We'll see tomorrow, though. I know he wants to hook it up for a little bit in his uh his demo store. In his little demo home theater room there. I ordered weeks ago. All right, yeah. Yeah, uh, I'll ask Robert again about the microphone. I mean, it's only coming from Hartford, so getting a microphone should be like, should have been like a week. I know he ordered, I know he ordered a 16 for the store back when I got the 32. And I, should, I don't think he got a 16 either. I know after they, uh, after they came on the, they started doing the podcast on the other channel. They mentioned something about like tripling, double tripling their prices. I mean, their sales ever since, since like October, which is when they came on the channel. So I guess it was pretty good that they came on the channel, at least business wise for them, because they got busy. They started selling a lot of, a lot of $16,000 processors. How is the new Martin Logan sub? So today, actually not today, I, I mean, I threw up the video today. We got, I got this in today, the Martin Logan Balanced Force 212. It is $4,499 each. It's dual opposed 12 inch drivers. So 12 inch driver on each side. So they should cancel out any kind of, you know, energy inside the enclosure. So less distortion. Somebody had asked if that glass shakes when something is playing. It doesn't shake because you can actually put like a little nickel up there or a dime and just balance it on the end. And it's so inert since all the back waves are firing against each other. They kind of cancel out anything inside. So it's like a dead quiet cabinet. Like it doesn't roll across the floor or anything like that. It doesn't rattle. So no, that glass doesn't shake or rattle or roll. Um, Class D amps got dual 850 watt amps in there. 3,400 watts peak. It does have uh, arc room correction built in. The only negative that I had about it was the software can only do one subwoofer at a time so even if you had like maybe some room modes or a null you would still have to manually go in with like room eq and look for that and try to fix that yourself because the software only does one subwoofer at a time although if you pick up the new anthem avrs and receivers those should I think Arc Genesis does multi sub calibration. So if you were to pick up uh, one of these, you, know, you guys know that Anthem is like part of Martin Logan, right? Um, if you pick up one of these, then that room correction would uh, would compensate for multiple multi multiple subwoofers in your room. But as it is, the room correction only does one subwoofer at a time. Luckily, in my placement, I didn't have any nulls. Like certain subwoofers, for whatever reason, have uh, have a null in my center, my main listening chair. 
Uh, this one, this one, no, is perfect. I was able to put these one in each front corner. So that was cool. I got the gloss black one. You can get the butcher block top. <laughs> White gloss top. And check it out. It's got speaker level inputs. If you want to go directly into the speak from the uh, from the amp into the sub and then back out to the back out to the speakers if you want. And then what else? It's got that uh it's got that cool little little buzz feature where you can just play that 20 hertz tone 20 24 whatever it just sweeps from like 20 to 120 hertz and if you have like anything rattling your room maybe like a window fixture or something like that that well, that little tone sweep will make it rattle so that way you can go straight to it and kind of lock it down so that way it gets rid of any kind of uh, interference in your home theater or your living room cool little feature i when i did that i did the little tone sweep which is that little button there um i got a light fixture that rattles like crazy i got my little baseboard heating rattles like crazy uh, i got shit in the kitchen that rattles like crazy and this goes down to spec wise frequency response 18 18 hertz i know the the pp16s i have go down to like 16 hertz well, everything I hear that everybody's like, hey, it really drops off pretty hard around 15, I think. But I get I get pretty good um, extension on my PV16s in my room. Probably because it's a, it's a smaller room. But this is, uh, yeah, man, that's 18 hertz. Goes down to 18. I haven't taken any measurements yet. I also didn't play any, like, really low, low frequencies so far. Like, I didn't try Edge of Tomorrow yet but because I was, like, half asleep today. So I'll check that out later. Later on during the week. But yeah, man, 140 pounds. So far, so good. I ended up watching uh, Tenet again. Which, if you guys have seen that, Tenet is like the most ridiculous base in a movie I've seen in quite some time. Just for whatever reason, it could just be a quiet dialogue between two people like John David Washington and the the female person in the movie. I think she was in Guardians of the Galaxy. They could just be sitting there eating dinner or talking over champagne, and then the music would just kick on. It would just be like thunderous. The musical score just thunderous for, for just out of nowhere, for no reason. It's just ridiculously loud. It'd be like, yes, I know you've got the painting, why did your husband purchase the painting for $9 million? Bong, bong. And then you just like, and then the dialogue is like, sha, 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 as the music just, just <laughs> vibrates everything. So incredibly amount, incredible amount of bass in Tenet, man. So check, definitely pick that up. If you got a crazy ass home theater with some big ass subs, Tenet probably the best sounding movie with Bath so far this year that I've heard. And this was this was after I watched a little bit of the Lord of the Rings, the first one, The Fellowship of the Rings, which I thought the bass was pretty good in that, but this just blew it away. I was like, God damn, that's a lot of fucking bass. But stay tuned for that. I'm going to try to keep, I'll probably keep that for like a good month or so. I mean, I do like them. They're not like gigantic either. Like the PV16s, I can't put the PV16s in my room because they're so deep in the front of the room. So they kind of like sit against the back wall. Um, and then I kind of cross them over kind of low just to pick up the uh, the low lows. And then I keep uh, I keep everything in the front, the smaller stuff in the front. What's that super sub mode on the new anthems? I didn't know, know what a super sub mode. Let's see. Supposedly there's like a shortage. There's a shortage of those. Of those going right now. I think a lot of folks that have pre-ordered the Anthem AVRs. I think they're back ordered to like February. <coughs> I don't know if it's just because they sold so many of them or... If they have a shortage of those AKM chips, you know, because of that fire, 
Could be. That could be an issue too. But I know they're pushed back to February now because I saw some dealer, like a dealer email about the availability. And plus, it even says in their website too, right there. So now available February 2021. So I'm excited to see how many people get there, actually get anything in December because it was supposed to come out in December. Well, this month. Sometime this month. And then the reviewers, I was supposed to get uh, this guy, the Avium 90. I was supposed to get that in January, so next month. So they sent me over the... They sent me over the perfect base kit, which is the Anthem mic and all that. So they'll, they'll let me keep that, which I would assume is in anticipation for the 90. Because I'm in line for that. <clears throat> but uh, let me see... Let's see if there's any other features in here that I missed. I don't know what super sub mode is. I didn't recall ever reading anything about super sub mode. It's got Adobe Atmos, AirPlay, Spotify. <coughs> Anthem. I don't know why this is there. Like, why is still go to PlayStation 3? <laughs> why? Why is the PlayStation 3 underneath the $9,000 Clydescape? <clears throat> Man, that's a nice system. Anybody that gets this? Like, like I like how the amps match and everything. Yeah, I mean, I'm not seeing anything about Super Sub. The PVK kit, blah, blah, blah. Or Genesis. Hmm. You know, I do like the fact that you get, like, the full edition of the software... And you don't have to pay like an extra five hundred dollars like you do for like direct. So a nice touch. At least I don't think you have to pay extra money for it, as far as I'm aware. I know with direct, if you want to get like the full version of direct, you got to pay an extra five hundred bucks. But uh, yeah, Neil, I don't see anything about super sub mode, unless it's in the manual. Justin the Great, these versus Rail Predator. Oh man, that's not even competition. These trounce, these trounce the Predators like handedly. I'm assuming the, you're talking about the Marlon Logans. Not even competition. Not even competition. They just play lower, harder, louder. Definitely more. Mm, are they more musical? I'd say. Um, I mean, they're both pretty quick subs, but it's like sheer output and room, rumbling bass, uh, extension. The Martin Logan's beat the Predators, for sure. The 1508s. Not that the 1508s are slouches or anything. They're good. They're awesome subwoofers for, what are they, 1600 bucks right now? 1600 Well, <clears throat> those are considerably... Uh, I mean, they feel like a $1,600 sub, whereas the Martin Logan, eh, I don't know if it feels like a $4,000 sub, but it's definitely more premium feeling than uh, than the Rells. I would say the Martin Logan is more on lines with the Rells higher end subs. Definitely not. I think the Dynamos are more, would be more competitive with the Predators from Rell. Like the Dynamo 1600 range, and then like the Dynamo like 1200, I think, for a little small 12 incher. Uh, what else we got? <clears throat> oh man. I got um I gotta do this video too this week. For anybody looking for an affordable an affordable outdoor projection system. It is where is it? Outdoor projector screens? Portable projector screen. Oh.
I got this projector thing from uh, Elite Screens. But I don't see where they even sell the projector. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Elite projector. So I got this in for review. 5% off the Moscow outdoor UST projector. So that's projector there. It is... There it is. I guess it's called Mosco, well, Mosic for movies and music. <laughs> I think they they cut off the for, the first half of movies and the last part of music, and they call it the Mosk Mosic Go. Such a strange name, I tell you. Um, man, I don't have any pictures of it, do they? Well, just that. I mean, it's an ultra short throw. It's an ultra short throw. It's got 25,000 hours of lamp life. It's a very basic projector. It's like $1,000. You get that projector. Um, it runs on batteries, too. It's got a built-in battery, so it should last uh, a couple of hours. I haven't tested to see how long it lasted for. But I did use it outside. It was battery-powered. It comes with a 50-inch screen. And I got pretty good video of that. We played some 4K, or not 4K. It was like, uh, what did we play? Uh, Planet Earth or something like that. We, we did it outside in the backyard when it was warm outside. That's how long I've had it. <laughs> they emailed me today about finishing it, <laughs> wondering where the video was. I was like, oh, don't worry. I do it this weekend. I was busy. But it's uh, pretty cool, you know, for the family. It's not anything great crazy. Interesting little portable, you know, if you're going to go camping or outside, you got the kids or something like that. Or if you got kids in the basement or something. It does come with that ultra cheap. Look at that. Look at that tripod. It's like super cheap. It's like Amazon branded uh, tripod. Like it feels so flimsy, like the projector is going to fall over and break. If you if you have this, if you do have it or you think about picking it up, definitely pick up a new uh, tripod for it because that tripod they give you is real jank. Be on the lookout for that. Neat little device, battery powered projector. And you know, speaking of battery powered projectors, speaking of battery powered projectors, I still have this. I did the video for this the other day. I think Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday. This is the what is this thing called? Uh, X Jimmy Halo. X Jimmy Halo. I don't know, is X Jimmy or X Jimmy? I think it's a Chinese brand, kind of like Xiaomi. This thing's got a battery too. I would fire it up here. I'm pretty sure it's got juice. Uh, maybe it's not charged. Hold on. There we go. Yeah, check this out. This thing's like super quiet too. Oh, that mic's... It doesn't buzz like that in, in person. I think the mic's picking that up. Oh no, it does make a buzzing sound. Hmm, wonder why it's doing that. But this thing's pretty cool, man. It's got Android TV. This this is just like my Sony TV. Yeah, that little buzzing sound is really uh exaggerated. And I don't know if you guys can see. Let me flash it back there. Yeah, that's pretty cool, huh? So cool, you could be like in bed and then shine this on your ceiling. That's a cool little, uh, cool little device, and it's like full 1080p, and it's pretty crisp. It's like really pretty crispy looking. Oh, look at that chat. Dude, it's super cool. I really like this. I can't wait till they get like 4K projectors this small and then make them for like $900. If anybody wants to buy this, let me know. I'll sell it to you. Three hundred dollars. <laughs> Off. There we go. Look at that. Super fast. Off. Fast. Well, semi quick on. <sighs> Thanks, X Jimmy, for sending it my way. I don't play with that in the bedroom. I shine up my ceiling. 
and do like 30,000 hours on that. That's awesome. I love these laser. I love these little laser projectors, man. <clears throat> I wish they'd come out with a like legit home theater projector for like a few grand. That was like native 4K. That was affordable. When is your when is your next home theater tour? My next home theater tour, I think we're shooting it tomorrow. Um, the boys are coming over tomorrow. We're going to do a review on the uh, the Focal speakers. The Focal Sopra N1s. Spoiler alert, these speakers are pretty sweet. It's a shame there's so much stinking money, though. These are the Sopra N1s. I don't know if you guys caught that vid, but we did the unbox. Uh, we got the black ones. I almost kind of wanted the white ones because I thought they would look really nice in my living room for like just two channel. But you know, they sent this the black because I told them I wanted to do a home theater video with them. And yeah, man, we got the black ones in. Man, these are like my new favorite, my new favorite bookshelves. Not only do they sound good, but they sound, I mean, they look, I think they look cool as hell. And they sound, they sound really good too. My, uh, my, like my favorite speakers were the, were the electrostats, but I'm really liking these, man. I like these beryllium tweeters. Like I've never heard beryllium tweeters before, but man, these are clean sounding. I've heard some stuff that they were like, uh, sharp, like ear piercing. I didn't find that the case at all. I thought they're quite, very quite detailed. Better than diamond tweeters that I had on the, on the eight hundred threes, the B and Dubs. Um, more detail I felt with the Dyn Audio. Well, then the Dyn Audios. The Dyn Audios were pretty good too, actually. I got the Dyn Audio Contour Twenties here, so we might do like a comparison with the Contour Twenties against these guys. I mean, these are 10 grand a pair. The Dyn Audios are 5,000 a pair. And we are going to pair them up with, with this, uh, this integrated here tomorrow. Cambridge, we got the Cambridge Edge. This is an integrated piece from Cambridge. This is a, the Edge A amplifier. It's got Cambridge Audio proprietary class XA amplification, which kind of, I believe it runs on a, like a class A bias. So it's very warm. When you, when you, heat, it, when you heat it up, it's uh, pretty warm. Like you can almost cook an egg on it. At least the, at least the, um, the Edge amplifier I had was very warm all the time. Very much like a class A amp would be. Uh, this is their integrated, so you don't need you don't really need a preamp because it already got the uh, it's already got the built-in. You just need to give it, you know, like a source, like a CD player or something like that. But we're gonna pair that up with the the Focal speakers and the Dyn Audio, which I think would be a nice little pair because it's kind of a warm sounding amp, and those speakers are, mm, you know, they weren't bright, but. I guess they could be a little softer, depending on what your ears like. But I think this would be a nice pair with that, and also the, also the Dyn Audios. So I reached out to those guys last week, got that in. So we're gonna be shooting that tomorrow, and we are going to. I think we're gonna shoot the theater tour tomorrow as well, because I got, I got all my speakers back in place. I got rid of the. The Rendell speakers, which were in there for the past month, so I finally got my Bowers and Wilkins back in there. So I figured we'll shoot the the theater tour tomorrow, and then after we do that, I gotta throw the full cows in there for their their five channel review. And what else I got? I got the you know the Trinov is there in, the, in my main rack, and then I got the Emotiva system in the second rack. So that's a little bit different from last year's from last year's uh, tour is the second rack. So all definitely pretty much almost all new gear this year from last year. I mean, the Cladescape is still there 
and I think the Panasonic is still there. Yeah, it's still there. But everything else I think is new. Although, like, subsequent... <laughs> any other tour be beyond this year is probably going to look the same because I don't... The Trino is not going to go nowhere and the Macintosh ain't going to go nowhere. And I don't think they're coming out with any new 4K Blu-ray players anytime soon. I mean, the Kaleidoscape, I know they're not coming out with anything anytime soon. Zipidi, Zipidi might come out with something new. I think they're hinting about that for next year. Maybe like a player that does Dolby Vision, so maybe that will be new. Other than that, I mean, I can't see myself getting any new speakers unless I get something really good for like a good deal or something. But the Bowers are probably going to still be there. I mean, that was new. That's new from last year, and this chairs are new from last year. I did go down from two rows to one row, so that's different. Um, so yeah, definitely. Um, I'm thinking to say my theory was like 80% different this year, change from last year. So it'll be a little different. We'll try to do it in one take. I, I think I did the last one in one take, which is like took like 20 minutes. So that was pretty cool. We didn't I didn't mess up like a dozen times. So I think we're going to do that tomorrow, the theater tour, the full calorie review, and the the Cambridge. Is the Cambridge was kind of intermixed the Cambridge review with that too. And I also got these bad boys in here. These are, these are coming in. These are called, oops, these are called the ISO acoustics. I don't think I'm getting the Gaia's though. I think I'm just getting the, the cheapy ones. Home audio. Yeah, I'm getting these, the bronzes. The brown, I think it's these ones. Yeah, the second from, the second one in from the small. These are gonna go underneath the, these are gonna go underneath the focals for isolation. Instead of going with spikes, I wanted to see if there was a difference with using these. I guess they're made of sorbethane or rubber or something like that. And then for the center, we're doing the Aperta 200s. So they're going to give me two of these to put underneath the Focal Center channel. And uh, we'll see if that helps out with any intelligibility. And this is cool because you can angle it as well. So you can angle it upwards, which I think is cool. I mean, these, I have the, I've got the, uh, the SVS feet for the subwoofer. What do they call those things? SVS isolation or something like that? Oh, no, sound path. SVS sound path. Those work. I remember putting that, those sound path feet on the rail predators. And I had one subwoofer with those on and then one without it on. And the one without it on was a lot easier a lot easier to localize. Like you could tell it was just different sounding on the right side than it was on the left side. And then when I uh, when I put the feet on, the one on the other side, I put feet on both of them. It was just definitely just, uh, just more punchier overall. Like I didn't think it made a difference, but it legit made a difference. I guess cause, I guess because the fact it just wasn't rattling that side of the it wasn't shaking anything on that side of the room because it was more elevated it was kind of like floating those things kind of make your your subwoofers float since they're not like no on on spikes which kind of couple it to the ground it's not like in the wood and these things are only 50 bucks too which is a good deal so 50 bucks for those feet I think that, you know, I didn't think it was going to make a difference, but I totally did, though. So that's why I, I was like, oh, you know what? Let me go check out the, let me check out the audio file version of these, which are the ISO acoustics. Let's see if the ISO acoustics are worth the extra 150 bucks or whatever they are. I would just assume they would do the same thing, but, but the, they got a cool, they got a cool look about them and they come in different sizes too. This is just one size. Uh, try and get some 
para paradigm speakers for review. Listen, I've been trying to get, I've been trying to get paradigm speakers for like, man, ever since the pandemic hit. And uh, oddly enough, paradigm is part of Anthem, which is part of Martin Logan. And uh, Martin Logan and Anthem is like totally down. But for whatever reason, that paradigm guy is just like, like, he don't care. Like, he doesn't want to send nothing over for it. whatever. I have no idea why. I've tried to get that, that paradigm subwoofer, the one with like, what is it, like six, eight inch drivers in it? It's, what is it? It's like something like $6,000 or whatever. Let me see if I can bring that up. It's a sick little sub though, like pretty sick sub. It's got that weird kind of like octagonal shape. Oops, that's the wrong one. Products. Oh, there we go. Subwoofers. So here's their site here. Was it this one? No, nah, this one. Damn, they. Well, hold on. I don't think I ever saw this one. So the signature sub two. Was this new? I don't recall ever seeing this. So what does this have? Let me see the show the drivers. So this is ten thousand five hundred dollars. Well, this has got three subs or movers, not shakers. It's got six ten inch drivers in sub two. Damn, yeah. So ten six inches in sub two. Move more air than a pair of fifteen inch woofers. So it's got six tens in there. Now, what was that again? It's got six 10 inch drivers. Hmm. What are the specs on that? So that goes down to seven hertz. Dang. Okay. Man, that's a beast right there. Oddly shaped, but okay. But I've been trying to get this one. I was like, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't ask for two of them. I was like, hey man, could you send me two, could you send me a pair of these? Uh, this has got six six eight inches. The other one was what was it six tens? So thirty four hundred watts peak. Look at that man, that's a nice ass sub over two. Damn, look at that. Get two of those bad boys. Mm. Let me look at the. What's the specs on this? I think this goes down to 7 hertz as well. Persona sub. No, only 12 hertz. Man, what was that thinking? Oh, 19. What? And then I think it goes down like lowest 15 hertz. Low frequency extension. On axis. And then 12 hertz. Man, maybe I should uh, I should just ask him for the sub two then. That goes down to seven hertz. I mean, this there's no slouch though. Six thousand five hundred bucks. I've been trying to get these in, and I also tried to get a whole set of these guys, the Persona Bs, with a matching center. I wanted to do. I wanted to do. What did I want to get one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I wanted to get six of these, and then I wanted to get. <laughs> the center channel uh, uh they probably thought i was like a crazy they're like you want to get six of these thirty five hundred dollars speakers and then the seventy five hundred dollars center channel and you want to get two of these <laughs> and then you want to get two of these subwoofers for sixty five hundred bucks and then you want us to forget that you have them <laughs> So I did try. I did try. I've been trying to get these, but uh, they they weren't having it. I don't know if it's too rich for their blood, but they, they weren't having it though. <laughs> I will continue to try. I will continue to try. Uh, da, 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 da. OLED Kingdom. Hi Shane. Question: In a small home theater room, twelve by twelve, is there any reason to go towers over bookshelves? Um, and man, if you like, if you like towers, go for towers. That's what I say, if you can fit it. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't go for towers. 
I like I I like the I like bookshelves just because they're smaller and they're easier to place. And um, I like to have all matching speakers. That's why. That's why I like to go with the bookshelves. But listen, if you can't uh, if you can't fit a subwoofer, then by all means go with with a tower. I would totally go for a tower if it was like a two channel system too. If I could fit it. Shane, what's your opinion on Vizio OLED TV? You know, they were supposed to send me a TV. They like emailed me like a month ago. They're like, hey, do you want to do the soundbar, the Atmos soundbar and the TV? I was like, Shh. I was like, Bleh. send it my way. I was like, I'll do it. <laughs> I never heard back. Uh, so they probably sent them to the, all the other TV reviewers out there. I was like, listen, you could have at least sent me the soundbar. It's like, I've done like every soundbar except for Vizio. <clears throat> Damn, you must be not me, Rich. If you were talking about those paradigm speakers, no, I wasn't going to buy those out there. I was waiting for them to send them to me. <laughs> I'm not that crazy. I'm not gonna spend a hundred grand on speakers. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. I watch your home theater tour on a loop for aspiration, but it's really hard to purchase this stuff in my country as we have to pay almost double because of high import tax. I would assume you're in, uh, what, Australia? Are you Australian, mate? I think, what is it, Australians have to pay double tax, am I correct? I heard Vizio OLED has bad motion. Dude, I haven't I haven't followed any of the TV stuff. I hear that Samsung is supposed to I think the word is they're supposed to be announcing their micro LED today. Sometime today. Um today's what is Thursday now? Let's see. Let's see if we can look that up real quick. I mean the word is LG is supposed to be releasing a micro LED as well. I have that on good Good faith, I heard that from somebody reliable. LED. I don't know if anybody spoke about that yet. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, six hours ago. Here we go. Oh, shit, it's on the verge. Browser. Oh, it's official. Samsung announces massive 110 inch 4K TV with next gen micro LED picture quality. Most people won't be able to afford it, but smaller models aren't too far off. So look at that. So it's official from six hours ago. Um, over the last few years, across the technology, Samsung isn't yet revealing a price for this enormous TV using the latest picture tech. Of course they're not, but you can expect it'll cost far more than any of the company's other 4K or even 8K sets. If the TV has 99.99% body to screen ratio, Samsung still managed to build a majestic sound system built into it. Delivers breathtaking 5.1 channel sound with no external external speakers. Hmm. So the 110 inch micro LED uses micrometer sized LED lights to eliminate the backlight and color filters utilizing conventional displays. Instead, it is self-illuminating, producing light and color from its own pixel structures. It expresses 100% of DCI and Adobe RGB color gamut. Wow. And accurately delivers wide color gamut images taken, taken with high-end DSLR cameras. The results are stunning and lifelike. An accurate brightness from displays, 4K resolution, and 8 million pixels. Since those LEDs are self-illuminating, you get perfect blacks and fantastic contrasts that have been known to define OLED. And since it's not organic, it's inorganic, thus should have better long-term durability. There shouldn't be any threat of burn-in, which you get on OLEDs. Around 100,000 hours of life on that. That's up to 10 years. In the case of the wall, micro-LEDs are put into modular panels, blah, blah, blah. As well, their 110 inch micro LED features 2.1. It supports all the things that makes it possible, like 120 hertz 4K gaming. 
manufacturing 110 it wasn't possible until recently so it just looks like it sounds like another like tech showcase nothing like hard consumer product just another one of those uh, show off concept type of things huh? that we already seen like last year but I did hear that LG's working on their own version as well that might come out in 2021 I mean with this news I don't know if it's been announced yet I don't cover TV stuff but I did get some uh, did get some word that LG has their version as well so I don't know I don't know if that's official yet but I do know they have one so interesting man you know if we get this I'm sure we're gonna get this in a smaller sizes at some point in time to be more affordable of course it sounds like that's what's happening but 100% of the color of DCI that's awesome like no color banding they didn't mention uh, like nits or anything like that but it looks impressive though you know 100% DCI and Adobe RGB 4k resolution 8 million pixels that's what I've been waiting for man that's why I didn't buy I didn't get any new TVs this year I've been holding off I kept I keep hearing about these micro LEDs next year for 2021 so I've been holding off to see what's happening with that tech. So hopefully it comes next year rather than 2022. Uh, getting a lot of snow there. Cold here in New York. Is it? Uh, oh, no. I'm in Connecticut. I'm in Connecticut. It's not snowing here. Guess on the price. I'd say 60 grand for the 110. No, I think that 110 is more money. I think that was a couple hundred grand. For the for what was available if I'm not mistaken I think it was more than 60 Robin Hood 4k blu-ray has great Atmos in Dolby Vision Robin Hood is there a Robin Hood movie in 4k is that the one with Russell Crowe Oh, yeah, 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 that, that Robin Hood. The one with, uh, what's his face, the kid. Well, he's not a kid, but the guy from uh, the Kingsman. Yeah, man, that does have pretty good sound. I don't, I did the review on that. Yeah, I did do the review on that. Yeah, I did a while, like last year, I think. I do recall that. It sounded pretty good. Yes, yes, indeed. Audioholics posted a new article about best sub under $1,000. Which ones are your fave? I think the best sub under a thousand bucks. Um, I think it's this guy here. I think it was under a thousand dollars. I think it was like nine hundred bucks. Let me see. I think it's uh this one. Wait, that's not the right one. Ultra. I think it's this one. Yeah, here it is. I think this is probably the best sub for for like home theater for a thousand bucks under a thousand bucks man actually that's a tough call this is a uh, alright so I got two choices here we got this one here which is the HS the shoe research or shoe reach no I think it's shoe research yeah it's shoe I remember asking them I think it was shoe research uh, this is only nine hundred dollars fifteen it's it's ugly I find it to be very ugly, but it sounded awesome. It's 900 bucks, and it goes down really low. It goes down to 16 hertz, lower in in room. I forgot. I think I took a measurement in my video, but I think I got pretty low. I think it did pretty good measurement-wise in my room. Other than that, I would probably go with the SPS um, SB3000. That's, I believe it's the same price. I think it's only 900 bucks too. But the, uh, but the, the shoe research one will definitely sound better for home theater though. This one only goes down to 18 hertz, a little bit lower in room. But this sounded really good for music and movies though, like, like dual purpose. Awesome. Whereas I, I really did like this one for movies though. I just wish it didn't have that thong. 
Like the grill looks like a thong to me. This is like the subwoofer thong, right? Like you get the, you get the butt cheeks here. You know what I'm saying? It's like the. It's like he's wearing a bathing suit or something like that. <laughs> well, those would be my two, that'd be my two top picks for under a thousand bucks. Strictly home theater, I would go VTF fifteen. For dual purpose, I would go SB three thousand. That uh, I like that app. I've used that app many times to dial in. To dial in the uh, room response, the PEQ. If you know how to use Room EQ, that P R Room EQ wizard, then uh, that built-in PEQ is pretty handy. For sure. So those would be my two picks for under a thousand bucks. I would say under two thousand dollars, it would have to be the KF KF ninety two. Uh, what else we got here? With the ninth series measured. Talking about OLEDs there. Speaking of Panasonic OLED can hit near a thousand hertz. You can now. You can now buy the Panasonic through Value Electronics for you guys that are interested. <clears throat> they have. So Very Electronics will be selling the Panasonic mm, Hollywood Monitor. I'm going to ask him about that tomorrow. It's not like I'm going to buy it or anything, but but they have the uh, the coloring monitor they're selling there. Uh, what's this one? Electronics.com. Bum, bum, bum. I, I don't... Here we go. Professional monitors, browsers. Dude, like every YouTuber is going to have this now. That's like a guarantee. He's about to get all kinds of sales for this. So, Value Electronics is now the only guy over here. I think there's another guy in like California or something like that. Uh, Panasonic Hollywood Professional Client OLED Display. It ain't going to be cheap. I don't think so. Oh, the price is right there. There we go. So, 55 inch FZ1000 is $2,850. 65 inches, $3,850. And are these uh, are these the same things? Uh, there's a GZ and an FC. Oh, those must be better. Uh, the GZ1000 is 3250 and the GZ1000, 65 inch, 4450 So there you go. Designed for Hollywood production, post-production, and content creation, these 4K HDR OLED displays are not mass-produced models available in other countries. These are all the very best hand-selected OLED panels, and the HCX video processor is tuned to Hollywood filmmaker picture standards. Ba bam There it is, man. I think that's a lot of people going to want that. Damn, a lot of people are going to pick that shit up. I do not believe this. these have HDMI 2.1. Let's see. Let's go check out the website. I can uh, I can guarantee you're gonna see all you're gonna see a bunch of YouTubers picking this up now. Just about guarantee that. Get ready within the next month. You're gonna see these popping up. Here we go. A spectacular cinema in home elegant design. The GZ. Aren't these like, aren't these available in the UK or something like that, right? Aren't these like everyday UK monitors? Yeah, man, I think this is just their, uh, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Vincent re review this recently? HDTV test? Adobe App Most Support. HDR, HDR 10 Plus. 4500 bucks. THX certified. Got the HCX pro HCX processor. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Could you please repeat it? Ah, uh, Siri. No. Okay. But yeah, my forty-five hundred bucks. Which size is this one? Hmm. This we're already at the end of uh twenty twenty, so. I, I I would think you would probably wait till next year's version because I know there's gonna be another one coming out next year, probably in the next three months. 
So I would probably hold off. But that's cool that they can get it, though. The Panasonic ones, the only only ones in the U.S., I guess, that uh, are selling those Panasonics. Very interesting. I'll just stick with the 77-inch OLED. I would buy that. Yeah, no mention of uh, 2.1. At least I, don't, I didn't see it. Let me click the specs right quick. Let's see little specs. Uh, OLED Super Motion Drive. Ba -ba -ba, THX presets. Covers everything, huh? HDR10, HDR10+, Plus, Dolby Vision, HLG. How's all that covered? What is it? This one in Vizio has everything, right? HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision. Media player. I think I like the worst media player ever. Uh, I don't see... Uh, I don't see HDMI 2.1 mentioned anywhere. I would assume not, though. No, I don't think... I think you're... I think it's just going to be the CX or the LGs are going to be are going to be the only ones. Yeah, it's only got HDCP 2.2, not 2.3. So no, man, you're going to have to stick with your Panasonic or your LGs for the PS5s. Sorry, hey, probably next year <laughs> you'll get the uh, you'll get two point one. I think if you're gonna buy a TV, just wait till next year, anyways. I think more TVs will have more two point one inputs. It'll be more reliable because you know this year is the year of the game consoles, and they're probably just like rushing to have two point one out. They thought they were gonna have everything good, but they didn't know if it was gonna work properly because no the consoles were out. But now the consoles are out. Now the stuff's gonna be even better next year. It should be better next year. Receiver wise, TV wise, and all that stuff. <clears throat> but alright, man. We're coming up to an, on an hour. I'm gonna log off. Thanks for chilling tonight. I know it's like two o'clock wherever you are. If you guys are in New York, it's like three o'clock in the morning um thanks guys for checking out the stream today thanks for subscribing over here on dynamically challenged i think next week we uh you know we might do a uh a little review of uh fellowship of the ring next week because we did the two towers last week or the week before and uh, we might do a fellowship next week or maybe tenant i don't know well tenant doesn't need to get a review because it's like a that's like a nine something anyways. That review is going to be dropping tomorrow, like one o'clock. That's when the embargo lifts for that. So ch check that out. And, uh, you know, come back next week. We'll do like a live movie night next week. But all right, guys. See you in the next one.